Well, it's a combination of rising sea levels and storm surges which will have the most significant impact and perhaps the soonest impact uh, from climate change. Uh, storm surges occur when high winds and low atmospheric pressure cause sea level to be higher than it normally is. If this also occurs on higher tide, then the surge is higher and will have more impact. Cyclones form over the warmest water in the ocean. Typically, the water has to be greater than 28 degrees Celsius for cyclones to form. Of course, the atmospheric conditions have to be correct also. So as the oceans warm, there'll be more water greater than the threshold of 28 degrees Celsius. As the atmosphere warms, it can hold more water vapour. This is a well-known principle. As a result, rainfall associated with tropical cyclones is likely to increase. We've already seen on the east and west coast of Australia that the frequency with which storm surges exceed certain thresholds has increased by a factor of three during the 20th century. Let's explain that. So if we have a picture of sea level against time, and these are the tides, or maybe there's some wind-driven effect in there as well, and we have the mean level, and then we have some threshold, and in this graph, there's two periods shown here um, when the sea level has exceeded this particular threshold. If now we increase the mean sea level, we actually increase the total height of the ocean and then ask how frequently do we cross this threshold, this same threshold, then in this case it's now a factor of seven. Well, there are seven occurrences of exceeding this threshold versus two in the original example. This impact can be quite dramatic. So if events that are currently a one in a hundred year event, by the end of this century could be happening once a year or more often. Uh, the oceans have got a huge capacity for absorbing heat. It takes the same amount of heat to warm the entire atmosphere by one degree Celsius as it does to take, as it does to warm the upper three meters of the ocean by one degree Celsius. But the ocean's almost 4,000 meters deep. So it can absorb 1,000 times the amount of heat that the atmosphere can store. As a result, the oceans are slowing the rate of climate change and as this heat is slowly absorbed into the ocean. The consequences of this, of course, are that even after we stabilise greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere, atmospheric temperatures stabilise relatively quickly, ocean heat content continues to increase for decades and centuries, meaning that the oceans continue to warm and sea levels continue to rise.